Um, so now we turn to our uh, transportation folks. Uh, Ms. Anderson, are you, are you ready to go? Oh, yes. Thanks for being here. So good morning, everyone. As Stephen said, my name is Nadia Anderson. I'm here today on behalf of Uber. So my role with the company encompasses both research and policy as it relates to road and traffic safety. And we are, again, absolutely thrilled to be here and join this very timely discussion. So before providing you with an overview of our efforts and the role that we think that ride sharing can play, I want to give you all a quick overview of Uber and how we operate. So we are a tech company that grew out of a desire to solve a very common problem. Our mission centers upon providing transportation at the push of a button everywhere for everyone. For our riders, we offer an option to get from point A to point B in a manner that is reliable and efficient. For drivers, we offer a flexible new way to earn money. And for cities, we help strengthen local economies and improve access to transportation. Today, Uber is available on six continents, in more than 70 countries, and in more than 450 cities around the globe. So you may be wondering, what can a ride-sharing company do to help reduce alcohol-impaired driving, and why are we working on this? Well, the answer is pretty simple and best described by this slide. So as we all know, the risk of being involved in a crash where alcohol impairment is a factor is highest at night and during the weekend. These are the same times when it's typically harder to get around because in many cities, public transportation shuts down or is severely limited, and taxi and other forms of travel are few and far between. We noticed an interesting trend in many of the cities where we operate, and this trend not only holds domestically, but is also seen in cities around the globe. Our rush hour was not the first thing in the morning or at the end of the day when people are going to and from work, but rather late at night when bars close. As you can see, our busiest times each week are typically Friday and Saturday night. So this trend resonated with us, not only because of the sheer number of drivers and riders that use our platform, but also because of the nation, we're seeing some alarming trends, and we think that our presence and some of our learnings can help make roads safer. As a company, we are exploring innovative ways to help reduce the number of lives lost due to alcohol-impaired driving, and we're taking a multifaceted approach to safety by not only working collaboratively with stakeholders, but also seeking new ways to use technology to help raise awareness and increase the public's knowledge, both about the associated dangers and highlighting the fact that they have other options for getting around. Now, drunk driving remains one of the most prevalent causes of road traffic death or severe injury. And while we've made great progress through enforcement and educational efforts, the numbers of lives lost are far too high and, as we know, completely avoidable. Now, the stats do not reflect a complete lack of knowledge or understanding, but for years, people have not had another option that was readily available to help them get around. And we think that being able to push a button and get a reliable ride in minutes, regardless of the time or day, can help change this. So simply said, with more options, we think people can help shift their mindsets and drive them towards better and safer choices. And this is essentially our North Star and the foundation that guides our approach and our efforts within this space. So our efforts are rooted in our partnership with the Mothers Against Drug Driving. Now, as you all know, this organization has worked tirelessly for decades to help make roads safer. We started our partnership in 2014 and are proud to serve as their official designated driving app. Together, we've made great strides in encouraging people to get home safely by using a designated driver. Now, we know that awareness campaigns are effective and have worked both at the national and at local levels with members of the law enforcement community and other safety stakeholders to make sure folks know that they have options and they do not have to drive after drinking. So two of our more recent campaigns are shown above. During the 2016 holiday season, we kicked off a campaign asking people to leave the keys at home. They were able to go online and sign a pledge and to do, saying that they would do just that. As a part of this effort, we also launched a website that was dedicated to our partnership with MAD that provides updated information about our collaborative efforts. Also, this past Super Bowl, we partnered with Tostitos to promote safe rides home. We provided promo codes and encouraged people to be safe and use Uber instead of driving after the big game. Now, we also work at the local level, and a few of our examples are here. This past February, we worked with MAD and local law enforcement in Sacramento, California to educate students at Sierra College about the dangers of driving while impaired. Officers gave students a chance to win Uber gift cards if they would test out what are called impaired simulation goggles and pledge not to drive impaired during the Super Bowl. 
Last December, for the third year in a row, Uber supported MAD's annual Taiwan On for Safety campaign. We helped encourage Connecticut residents to place a red ribbon around their cars and remind other drivers of the importance of not driving while drinking and to be safe and responsible out on the road. And lastly, who can forget the one-of-a-kind partnership with the New Jersey Township of Esham, where we provide residents with rides home from bars and restaurants. Since this program's introduction, Evesham officials have seen a dramatic reduction in drunk driving fatalities and last reported an 83% reduction in DUIs year over year. Now, as you can see, we are deeply committed to our work to help reduce DUIs and plan to continue working along MAD, local law enforcement, and other members of the safety community. But this is not the extent of our efforts and the role that we think that we can play. We are also interested in learning more about our impact. Specifically, if the availability of Uber and ride sharing are changing how people think about drinking and driving, if the public thinks that drunk driving is still a major safety issue, and the ways that they think that technology can help. So aligned with this desire to understand what works and the role that ride sharing can play, we conducted a survey alongside Matt of our rider base and the results are encouraging. The survey found that nearly 80% of riders say that Uber has helped them personally avoid drinking and driving and that Uber was their top choice for trips when they've had, quote unquote, too much alcohol to drink, to drive. Compared to other options, such as public transportation, taxi, other services, and walking. However, it is important to note that we do not think these shift in mindsets happened in a vacuum. In fact, we believe that it's largely due to our collaborative efforts with MAD and the work that we've done together to raise awareness about the alternatives. Another part of the above change in perceptions is the fact that we're able to provide a reliable ride when people need one. Now, we acknowledge that ride sharing is still relatively new and that the body of research on the various impacts that ride sharing can have on alcohol-impaired driving, be it measured by DUI arrests, alcohol-related crashes, or road traffic fatalities is sort of still evolving. There have been a number of studies on the subject that all look at various factors and employ various methodologies for understanding the relationship between the two. Now, hopefully more studies like this are on the horizon, and we're interested in exploring if there are other ways that we can work together to better understand the ways that ride sharing can help. In the interim, what I can say is that we're grateful to provide a transportation alternative that can help people get around safely, and we think that more and more people are recognizing that Uber is an alternative to getting behind the wheel after drinking. So I want to close with a reminder of the number of deaths due to alcohol impaired crashes in 2015, 10,265. This is the equivalent of nearly 22 Boeing 747 airplanes. Uber plans to continue to work with the safety community to help reduce these numbers. In the past, we've used social media, we've launched awareness campaigns, we've provided promotions and discounted rides. In the future, we hope to do more. As a tech company, our efforts are rooted in data, and we think that technology and innovative approaches to reducing dangerous behaviors can also help. We know that many of you in the room have a long history working on the issues related to road safety, and also think that our presence, our activity, and our approach within this space also has great promise. We believe that by working together with safety organizations, stakeholders, and governments alike, that we can help tackle some of the biggest challenges that we face on the roads today. We're committed to being a part of these efforts moving forward. And while we, don't, we know we won't get there overnight, we're happy to be a part of this conversation. And with that, I would like to thank you again for the opportunity to be here. And I look forward to any questions you may have at the end. Great. Thank you very much. That's uh, fascinating.